friends, it's Margaret here from Emmy's Orchids and uh, what am I doing today? Well, I'm fertilising and uh, if we have a look here, I've, uh, I should have started this yesterday but yesterday I didn't, uh, I didn't feel too good again, I just, uh, one of those days, um, but I did start it yesterday and um, this is just rainwater, that's all I use at the moment. And without the fertiliser, the TDS was 71 and the pH was 6.50. Then I put just some calcium in and I brought it up to 173. And then I added seaweed extract which brought it up to 196. Now you'll see the pH there with just the calcium in was 6.32. And then with the addition of the seaweed extract it went up to 6.17. And that to me is sufficient um, to do a feeding today. And um, the reason I'm still feeding is because um, we're the 4th of November and we haven't got, gone into what I call our winter weather yet. Now we may do next weekend, but this weekend it's given it mild again. and. Um, I'm at the moment in the horns of a dilemma in regard of when do I start my winter rest. Um, but at the moment, because everything's actively growing, um, I'm just going to continue. I mean, there will come a point when um, I will be able to start the winter rest, especially on some of the dendrobiums. Some of the other orchids, they won't be rested at all. That's the Pseudolamellatum, and um, they've got a lovely great big tail, that one has. This is the one, unfortunately, where um, that growth um, rotted down on me, didn't it? And um, I put some dragon's blood in there, and that's that sealed that wound. So um, hopefully now um, that one in the spring will give me a, another growth. Now these are absolutely really bone dry. These should have been watered yesterday. There's another little growing flower there. Uh, and that's a little bit wrinkly. They should have been watered yesterday but as I say I wasn't particularly that brilliant yesterday so they've just had to bear bear with me again. Um, this is the other mount, the other pseudo lamellatum and uh, there we go. And those growths, they're, they're fine. That one and that one. Just tucked under there, can you see? So those two growths are fine. And um, again, um, these will be watered in a few minutes. Um, what else did I do? I did one or two things yesterday. I checked the records uh, to see which of the um, dendrobiums I'm going to be able to give a, a winter rest to. That Thrissiflorum there um, with the um, one or two canes that are dying back, that will go into a winter rest. Uh, but I'm still going to feed them at this moment in time. Um, that's the Spring Dreamer pollen in the window there. Um, this is Macruma menten. And um, this one's still very actively growing, so um, I'm not going to give that a winter rest. Likewise, you see, um, this is a little cat layer there, and that's sending new roots out. Um, but what I did yesterday with some of them, if I just gently manoeuvre that round there so I don't knock everything over. Um, I did look at some of the orchids. And um, some of them, I've got the addition of some sphagnum moss. And because we're going eventually into our winter months, um, I'm very reluctant to have sp uh, sphagnum moss in, uh, in with any of the mixture, simply because um, it stays too wet, too long. And this is a prime example. This little one here is a species fell, and it's my Phalaenopsis parisii. And uh, this is still an active growth. I'll lift her out there and bring her closer. So this is still an active growth. And down there, that little leaf there, 
two leaves you can see just underneath. Now on, I've been unaware of this. I just uh, saw something uh, trying to come up through the media and when I've looked now um, that's actually a little cakey. So um, from the, from the mother, mother plant so that's been distressed and it sent out that little cakey. So what I've done with this one uh, it's not a very big container like you can see it's terracotta inside and um, I've put some grow stones at the bottom and then the rest is um, lava rock. So when I water through these through the winter um, it won't retain all that moisture because when I checked it yesterday I'd got sphagnum moss um, in the middle. Uh, well that's no good, especially not. I, I mean this wouldn't survive a winter, especially if it does turn cold. And uh, this one here, this is the um, Cattleya Pastoral Innocence. Now I don't know, can you see that? Now I don't know, can you see how it's wet round it? Now I don't know whether that's the rot, some rot set in. But that was a new, see that one there, that was new and that's died back. That was new here and that's died back. I've just got that and that's very debatable. So sometimes you can do everything right and your orchid still won't survive. And yesterday, if I just lift this up here and manoeuvre myself here, these were the little cakeys of this uh, crumamentum. So what I did yesterday, now these have got a little tiny bit of sphagnum moss, not a lot, but um, I've put these in, this little tiny container here, and I've just left enough sphagnum moss to give a little bit of hydration to these cakeys, which are very, very healthy. I've got one there, and I've got another one there. So, um, hopefully, these, these two you're looking at now, uh, they do come up onto this top shelf. I've just had to uh, bring one down below because um, I'm just showing you things. But you see there, it's got a nice growing tip there. And uh, this is just a little... Dolly container. There's a nice growing root and um, so I've just put enough in to um, when I see that sphagnum moss there turn completely white then I'll know I can actually um, just put some water in that little base in that little base there. It'll be able to absorb some of that water up and then we'll start the process again. So watering now is basically on a look at it, check it, does it need watering? I mean this one here which is my chrysotoxin, I was looking at the notes yesterday and this one wants a winter rest but at the moment we're not really into what I call winter here. So that will be getting watered and fed, even though it might be the last one it'll get. Um, this is the other little species one I've got. And I checked this yesterday. This is Phalaenopsis um, finlianum by Stuartiana. And uh, that's at the moment. This is a, the deciduous one, um, but that's still growing. So, um, like I say, that'll be on a day-to-day -day 
check it, look at it. This is the um, Dendrobium Friedrichsianum and uh, I shall be checking that shortly. Now let's just go over here. These are some of the uh, frags and you can see there, this is Phragmopedium and the Empire. And you can see new growth there. That new growth now started to extend. And uh, this one is still in bloom. I will be looking at um, the frags today, also the pathiopedlums and the cat layers on this back wall. Now this one here is the um, Dendrobium polyanthem cinnamon primulinum. If you remember this one, um, came as a lovely specimen last year and uh, because I disturbed it, it dropped every root. I managed to keep the canes from desiccating and then it has sent out these lovely new growths. So this I've got some nice green roots. That won't go up, that won't be having a winter rest. Well not yet anyway. Sorry about that. Just trying to manoeuvre some of them back. That's the Angraecum, Sesquipedale, and uh, that will be getting fed today. Just trying to send a, a couple of little side shoots out. Um, that should have been watered before now. But um, like I say, I'm still uh, still recovering really. It's uh, whatever I've had, it's not been very nice. Well, there's a lot of it going around. But sometimes, uh, leaving your orchids alone, uh, sometimes they do fare a little bit better. Now this one here, this is the uh, the one which is the uh, Lelia labata, and that's on that scrunchy sponge and under that new growth there that uh, you can just see that's sending out a root also and that's going down through the little scrunchy and this just sits up here in the window let me just get hold of it There, up there. This one here, this is my Alcoglossum. Um, Alcoglossum, let me just have a look for you. Alcoglossum subdiflorum. Can you see? Probably won't. And that's uh, also an active growth. So this one will be watered shortly. I've got to now just check some of the Kingianums. These are not the Kingianums, that's Dendrobium a day. This is Falco rostrum. Um, the, Kingi the Kingianums are on this shelf. So I've moved the succulents out into our bedroom which faces south and I'm going to bring these Kingianums up here onto that windowsill. This is the uh, Phalaenopsis to Trespus and that's sending out a nice new green root. I'm just going to turn this little fan off. There we go, sorry about the noise, I forget it's on sometimes. And um, there's no rush, I said to Keith, we'll uh, sometime next week we'll put this um, piece of rack up on the top here and these the Plicotiles can go up there then. Um, this one here, this is the Ricteri. Let's just see if I can lift it down without causing any problems. And this has just been left. And look at that, that new leaf. It's been left but it's happily sending me that new leaf out, growing away.
This is of course the uh, Dendrobrium macrophyllum, which is desperate to be watered. And we have new growing too there. I don't know if you'll see that. But of course we've got a lot of canes which maybe next year I'll be able to cut back. And that just sits on the shelf here. And of course these are the uh, Dendrobium phalaenopsis that um, I've repotted. That one's just going to start to open now. I have actually got names for these now and I've named them, I've wrote the names on properly because uh, they're from um, Sanuk um, Nurseries. And this one is Dendrobium phalaenopsis summer, oh sunny cocktail. That's that one. Um, that one is I, I thought that was more lilac, but this one's called, this one here, it's called Blue Happiness. And this one we're looking at now is, um, although it looks really maroon, doesn't it, this morning. That's why I, I thought it was a maroon coloured one. And it's lighter now because the sun's just come out. But that's called Tile and Black. And um, these today, I should, I should look at these today, sorry about that. And um, these will actually get a water and a feed today simply because I believe we might have flower inflorescence down there. And uh, there's that little tiny one. I don't hold out much hope for the little tiny one, but you I mean you never know. You never know. And uh, as we climb up here, that's that nice white phalaenopsis. And if I gently just take you around here. Sorry about that, it's going to not go into focus. Better bring it near to something to bring it into focus. Sorry about that. And the reason why I'm wanting to take you up here is this is the uh, big delicatum. And that's the one. Now I'm going to. See, that's where they come from. And um, I need to. I'm really, <laughs> I've got my neck fully back. I need to bring this down and just check it because this one's got to definitely go uh, for two months of a winter rest. Now, this is the big plicker tile. Now, this one, I've got it in this open type basket, but it's not quite, can you just, can you just see it if I touch it? It's not quite secure enough. So I'm going to get that down and I'm going to wire that better inside that because that's a, uh, an inside container and that's the outside container but I need that to be uh, tighter um, in its pot and then if I'm still feeling energetic this afternoon I shall have to look at the fowls because uh, they also need watering another one of the Phragmopediums, that's one of the seedlings I got and um, they're all growing fine I think this one, have a look at it this one has got no water at all I'm going to take it round this way you'll see that um, there's a little bit there on that uh, bark of um, 
salts. It's not mould, it's just salts. But this, uh, that will have to be watered today. Like I say, but the fowls, you don't have to worry so much with your fowls because, um, you know, they will tolerate a little bit of neglect. Um, better to have no water than actually drown them in water because at this time of the year you do more damage by uh, overwatering them. That's my big frag here. And this week I will um, elevate some of these other ones round. Now let me just see which this one is. This is Phragmopedium grande. That's that new growth and it's sending up a new leaf. So, uh, like I say, oh, this is this is the Cymbidium. This is the one that um, was very, very desiccated and I've lost that growth there and I'd lost another one there and it's now attempting to send me another one up. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed with that one. And I think everything else is actually doing quite well. And like I say, the uh, the dendrobiums at the moment are just absolutely loving this windowsill. Well, this shelf here, and what it does, of course, it allows all the maximum sunshine to come through, all the maximum light. This is my um, Lelia autumnalis, and that's sent out. That new growth there. This one just sits in this little glass container here. So, um, this is it for now. Let's just have a look if uh, this one has grown anymore. My clumsy hands have to be careful. I don't like to knock everything about. Because this will be ready to be watered again. Put it down there. And this is, uh, there we go, Oncidium powii. And that's still growing. And that will need watering and feeding today. So thank you for joining me. To your orchids as we go into the uh, changing and weathers. Oh, look at that one. This is the uh, Phalaenopsis tetraspis, and I don't know the LC just there. That's also sending out a new root. So that'll be fed and watered today. Well, everything will. So from me to you, take care. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye now.